me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the March 23, 2015 Selections Meeting. First on the agenda tonight, we had a non-public session, and now we're going to go to public comment. Anyone wishing public comment? Yeah, please join us at the podium. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, Mr. Town Manager. My name is Pete LaChapelle. I work with Waste Management. Uh, I appreciate your time this evening. I'm here to talk about what's going to be on your agenda a little bit later, the recent uh, trash and recycling hauling services bid that went out mm -hmm. early December of yeah. last year. Yeah. Unfortunately, waste management uh, did not bid. How the bid was written precluded us from entering a bid. However, two companies did supply bids, Triano and Commonwealth Waste Transportation, or CWT. Triano's bid to, tra uh, to transport the waste to either e to Eco Main in Portland and ironically to Rochester Turnkey Landfill was 350 per haul or 1675 per ton, and that's based on an average payloads of 20.89 tons over the last 12 months. And CWT came in at 255 per haul or 1220 per ton either to Rochester or North Andover, Mass. CWT was the little bit on the transportation part. However, the real concern I have is on the tipping end or the disposal piece of it. I realize the town, while well, will be at the end of July or end of June, no longer a member of the Southeast Regional District. However, as part of Waste Management's bid response last year to the district, Waste Management would honor pricing regardless if the town stayed in the district or not. Our pricing on that bid was $60.25 per ton. Eco Maine was $55.85 per ton. Now on the surface, yeah, they were $4.40 less per ton. However, if, if you take into part, our, if you consider our original bid, we also proposed that waste management would honor that new pricing effective, effective January 1st of this year. In essence, saving the town $50,000 just over. Now, the combined disposal, tipping, and transportation bid from waste management and CWT is $72.45 versus Triano and Eco Maine at $72.60, 15 cent different. And when you add the additional savings associated with the early reduction in tipping fees, that would save the town over $60,000 when you combine the tipping and the transportation differential. Now, it has come. I have come to learn that the town went back to Eco Maine to see what they could do for a better disposal number. The argument I heard was since waste management offered an alternative bid, that the town felt it was only fair for Eco Maine. I, I personally, I don't think that really holds merit. The bid was the bid, right? I mean, when the bid goes out, that's your bid price. Every vendor submitting a price had the opportunity to do so, and waste management came to the table and was able to offer something. Two other important points I want to make uh, point out is this bid was a bid for the Southeast Regional District, not the town of Hampton. So I guess I'm a little confused on how the town can go back to Eco Maine and ask for a better disposal pricing when your bid in December was for hauling only. So it's a little confused on that. And the other point, is, and again, I just looked at it briefly, your own uh, 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 purchasing policy and procedures, it looked like you may have uh, broken those as well. But point of order, Mr. Chairman, is, is this a business no, appointment or is no, this public? No, comment? and we're, your time is coming yep, to It is, end. and I, you know, I appreciate uh, your time. I sit in your shoes on the City Council in Rochester, New Hampshire, so I know this very well. So I'm Thank here, you. I appreciate your time, and Thank hope you, you consider all the facts before you make Thank a decision you. on this important contract. Thank you. Any other old comment? <coughs> um, any other public comment? Um, announcements of community calendar, Rusty. The only I have is the uh, the Hampton uh, 
the Village Preschool has their Easter Bunny breakfast this Saturday at uh, Hobbs House <laughs> from 8 to 11, I think. Uh, it's a good breakfast. If your kids want to go have breakfast with the Easter Bunny, it's a good chance to go to that and support a worthy cause. And <coughs> Mrs. Wesley? Uh, I'm sure everyone in Hampton has received that the service by Aquarian has received the, the little insert from Aquarian. Uh, it says, our refund is your reward for the next three years. Your water bills will include a 4% credit. So that went out with the um, first quarter billing, just so you're aware and you have written confirmation. Mr. Bean. No, sir. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, just uh, a couple of days ago was the first day of spring. Hmm? Somebody forgot to tell Mother Nature, so uh, I'd like somebody to kind of give that message, please. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to the consent agenda, we have a uh, veterans tax credit. Uh, a number of people. Does someone want to move that? I'll move it. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Moving on to appointments. First, we have Charlie Preston this evening. Welcome, Charlie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, I prefer the statement because of what I, I appreciate you letting me on the agenda. I told Christina I'd be down under 10. Thank you. So I'll go through it. If anybody has any questions, uh, whatever you like. <coughs> Mother's Day 2006. Patriots Day 2007. Snow from January 27th through February this year. We can all agree on the causes. Excuse me, we can all disagree on the causes, but we can all agree these were costly major events where Mother Nature shows who's boss. Personally, I think the DPW, the DOT, and DRUD did the best they could in a bad situation. Recent infrastructure improvements at the beach <coughs> made their job more difficult. Car bump outs, meter kiosks, narrow entrances and exits, granite curbing, street lights, signs, trash cans, hydrants, and drains. A few examples that can make snow operations difficult. Throw cars into the mix and you have a recipe for disaster. We need to address this in our JOP when it comes to plowing. The town, the DOT, and DREG can improve public safety with little help from friends. Let's get together after the seafood festival and be proactive and have the people that actually do the, plow, do the plowing tell us what they think would help them do their job. Odd and even parking, snow emergency warning lights, snow dumps, off-road parking might be a few examples. Let's listen to both our residences biz and businesses and try to get people to work together and improve things for everyone. We can do it. I wanted to get on the agenda to let everybody know that media enforcement starts April 1st. After reading the local paper Friday, the state will delay meter enforcement to let Mother Nature melt the snow. It seems like this is a long way to go. As I'm sure you know, the old saying that everybody has an agenda, or well, mine's always been, to make Hampton Beach more user friendly. It's our job to protect it and share it. In my attempts to get what I believe are reasonable concessions from Dredd for town residents and state parks and veterans license plate holders in the pre and post season. I found some information that the board might review for JLP considerations. In an Hampton Beach parking meter fund financial audit for the 10 months ending April 30th, 2012, you can read a 47 page audit that goes from the top to the bottom of operations of New Hampshire State Parks and Meter Patrol. This audit is very educational and is mostly written, it is a mostly written assessment of the Meter Patrol prior to 2013 that a lay person can understand. This audit is very detailed and the selectmen, the town manager, the parks and rec director, the precinct commissioners could possibly value some of the information. On the other hand, Dred could possibly learn a few things from both the precinct and the town parking operations. After all, we're in this together to promote Hampton Beach and improve voter exper visitor experiences and our revenues. At the end of this last season of 2014, 
I requested information from Dred, the town of Hampton, and the Hampton Beach Village District. A couple of things that jumped out of me in the numbers were the Hampton Beach Village District earns more than $500 per space over what the town realizes across the street. Mm. Both lots charge a flat fee and do not issue tickets. Dred, on the other hand, charges $2 an hour meter kiosks in May through September. Two years ago, Dredd extended their season a month on each end, a dollar an hour, half the summer rate. Tickets were issued to violators. The minimum ticket was $25 if you it in 15 days, 50 from 15 to 30, 75 30 or 45 days, and 100 45 to 60. Over 60 days, the citation and outstanding fees refer are referred to our collection agency, it says. The most disturbing thing to me personally was the parking tickets issued in the extended half-price season months of April and October. I wonder if the tickets are half-price. I truly feel the town, state, and the precinct will be hurt if these trends continue. Once upon a time, we were known for sun, sea, sand, and sounds. Then it all changed to traffic, tow, tickets, and trouble. Huge investments by the town and the state taxpayers are turning things back around. Let's go keep going forward and not backwards again. I, if I, can I pass out a sheet to you? Okay. Jim. Thank you. There's an explanation of dread figures. That I got these numbers from Brian Wilson, who manages the Beach State Park. They show April 2013, Calais stats. Calais is the company that, that provides the kiosks, manager ones, and the other ones that, that do that. They're a couple out of Florida. When it says number of receipts, those are transactions, how many customers each, you know, they had total. Then you have your revenue number, and you have the number of tickets. Well, in April 2013 it was the first time they extended the season again back to April. We had done them to shorten it, and now we're coming back with it. They took in $41,814. They gave out zero tickets. It was, they were being nice because it was new, and it, it, it was a grace period there. <coughs> Come October in 2013, the receipts were 14,533, the revenue 32,600, number of tickets 554. The ticket receipts were 4% of the transactions. When it says number of receipts, like I said, those are transactions. When we get to April 2014, we go to 20,000 transactions, 41,000 revenue, the tickets went to 178, less than 1%. But here's where you see the jump. This is what jumped out of me. In October 2014, the numbers went, of transactions went to their lowest. The revenue went to its lowest. The number of tickets went to its highest of 788, which became 7% of the transactions. But in that 7%, if you figure... 788 tickets at $25, that's $19,700. Your gross revenues are $23,000. If 10% of those tickets are not paid within 15 days, your ticket money mm -hmm. beat out your gross revenue. <clears throat> and this doesn't include what it costs you to take that money in. So this, it's a very slippery slope. You know, people have heard, but these are their numbers, and, and, you, and, you, and you, you can see it. So I really hope that you could consider this, because um, in, in closing, I'd like to ask that the Board of Selectmen, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, the Hampton Beach Village District, state reps, our senator, and our governor to support parking privileges for state parks plates and veteran plates. The whole key to this is only on weekdays, excluding holidays, starting the Monday after the Seafood Fest until the end of the local school season. 
By doing this, they will not miss any revenue on holidays, on weekends, or during what is really the summer season when, the, when, when it's out of school. I'd also like to ask Dredd to sharpen their pencils and consider only charging on weekends after the Seafood Fest. With the official closing date to be Columbus Day, I firmly believe this would turn into an asset for all involved and we would see, and we would see our revenues increase and our costs go down. Thank you very much. And if, uh, if anybody wants any answer on those numbers, feel free to call me. Okay. Mr. Barlow. I think it's a good idea I mean, to look at it. Again, we need to meet with <coughs> probably each department down that we have at the beach. I mean, it can get daunting when you, when you start talking about dread and then you talk about park, you know, the uh, highway department, DOT, and stuff like that. But we got to still continue to talk and, and do it. And I, I got no problem with me meeting with them. Wait, on a, on a uh, proactive, not a uh, bitch session type of thing with them. I think we need I'm to. Not, I'm not bitching with them. Oh, I know, I know, I know. You do. We're doing this with spots, facts, and figures. Absolutely. This is Wellesley. Uh, Charlie, help me out. Um, what are the kale stats? Is that an abbreviation? I just kale can't. is the company. Oh, from, okay. From Florida, I think I'm not sure, but I think it's Clearwater. They own the meters. I, I think it's they pronounced Calais. Okay. Oh, and they they okay. run the kiosks. They sell them, maintain them. I think they actually get a little piece of the action on the. I wouldn't be surprised. Thank you. I just a little puzzled by that. I appreciate the information. Thank you, Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. Um, what, what's your position on if you go to a state park up north uh, in the winter? And I, I think most of us would argue today or assert that uh, Hampton and Hampton Beach uh, is a 12-month-a-year destination, uh, and that is how it was 20 years ago. And people want to go down there and recreate during the winter. When you go to a state park in northern New Hampshire, and it's beautifully maintained and it's plowed, and then you come to a uh, parking facility that you've articulated uh, creates revenue in the terms of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it looks worse than a third world nation during the winter, and there's no access. Could you comment on that, please? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm going to guess 10 years ago, I could be off by a couple of years. I had a petition down the beach that was signed by 220 people <coughs> with their names, addresses, printed, signed. And I dropped it off at John Lynch's desk. And you know, so we've been working on it for a long time, and they've started. I mean, they got a long way to go. Got lots of like out of the plow, the CPA, all I'm talking, than it used to be. But they tried to start. It does look awful. But I also think that if, if, if after Seafood Fest, we got the guys that actually did the plow, sit down, and said, what can we do to help you? And, you know, if you did an odd and even system on the cars, parking on one side, so when the guys come to plow, well, the seeds open one night, the next night, and was on the other side, they come through. So I think there's weak things we can do to help the guys that actually do it. Right. But would you agree that it's a 12-month-a-year uh, a and those profits should be amortized over the length of the whole year and that that parking lot should be maintained both for safety, safety of Hampton residents, safety of taxpayers that uh, pay taxes, <coughs> uh, pay meals and rooms that, that contribute to the state's economy, that the state has a, a higher level of uh, performance because it, it really does encumber uh, tourism, it does encumber uh, profitability for taxpayers, and it jeopardizes safety. And I, and I think you, this is kind of your bailiwick, and uh, I think that the state should maintain those, those parking lots, and perhaps you'll agree, just as they do elsewhere in the state. I, I agree around. with you. Thank I, you. I agree with you, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Wardell. Yeah, Charlie, it, uh, good figures here and everything. And I agree with you on the Monday through Friday and the shoulder seasons and local residents should be getting, and I think it would attract more people if there was less revenue being generated from the parking for that. And, you know, it's interesting with Dread, that I, something I, I found out this weekend that I didn't realize, that if you're a New Hampshire resident over 65, Monday through Friday, you can ski free at Cannon. That's like a $65 ticket. So residents should be able to get some kind of a break on parking in Hampton, which is interesting. So, no, I think it's good, and I think, I think you do a great job, and uh, I agree 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your report. We'll take all of this into uh, consideration.
Every year you keep us informed. We do. We go <laughs> especially about the uh, when the when it starts. But now you can make the snow be gone. Mother Nature will take care of it. Thanks, Charlie. She'll take it away. Moving on, um, Ed Tank Tinker, the assessor, is going to join us. Extras left. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did you here uh, I can make one. Just the moment of extras. Um, 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 here. These are extras. I had. I think there was some extras of this sheet, but I don't. Yeah. Um, I think there's one. Charlie. There you go, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Um, I have uh, four items tonight to request your recommendation on um, the first being the uh, set of abatements the 2014 abatements this is the first group there's nine total um, seven of them are recommended for approval two recommended for denial the recommended refund amount is five thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars and ninety six cents and I'll answer any questions you have on any of those if you would like Mr. Bridal all set Mary Louise. I appreciate the specifics on each one. I assume we're going to vote on approve and denial separately. You can or as each grouping? grouping? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Bean? No, sir. Mr. Wardell? Yes, okay. Does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Yeah. Let me accept its recommendations. Okay. And a second? Recommendation for what? For the first grouping. The first grouping. Approved. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Next. Second grouping. Yeah, the second. <laughs> the two denials. Is that on B, you mean? No. Well, <coughs> if you look at the cover letter, I had nine. Listed individually. Okay. So we have to vote for denial too. We'll authorize. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Yeah. Um, second item is a request for the board uh, to vote and discuss and vote to implement RSA 7610, the rounding off of the tax bills. Um, as the creator of the warrant, I'm, I'm presenting this to you. It, it actually will assist the tax collector. Um, there's minor issues in rounding of uh, bills uh, based on how far out the decimal is. So there's a, it's not a, it doesn't result in a big or any really major change in the total value. It's just the bill sometimes can be off by one, two, or three cents, and it's more of a accounting issue for the tax collector and ease for the people paying as well based on you know a few cents or, mm -hmm. and it, what actually will happen is anything 50 cents or above will round to the next dollar 49 below will go down to the prior dollar amount mr. chairman in accordance with uh, the 12 March 2015 uh, letter from Donna Bennett uh, to the board uh, I motion that we uh, round each property and tax warrant to the nearest dollar per RSA 7610 is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. And going on to C. Yep. C is a, an intent to cut that was submitted by the owners of 86 Woodland Road, the Woodland Road subdivision. I believe you're meeting with them later this evening. This intent to cut is for the clearing of the four additional home lots as well as the road leading from Woodland Road. Uh, their plan is what I understand from the developer is that tomorrow their plan is to disconnect electricity from the existing house and begin clearing the front lot as well as the beginning of the roadway off of Woodland. That will be the beginning project. This intent currently reflects the entire subdivision once complete. Of course, we'll get a report of cut after, and, and those numbers will be the accurate numbers. So um, for them to move forward tomorrow morning, um, they would need a 
if the board approves a signed, a copy of this signed intent. Mm -hmm. yeah, so do we a motion on this right now? Yes. Yeah. Do we have a motion? Yes, I would motion that uh, we uh, authorize the notice of intent to cut water tender uh, map 148 lot 4 on Woodland Road. And is there a second? A second by Mr. Wardell. Hold on. Or we're opening it for discussions. Mrs. Wolseley? Um, does anyone check to confirm the amount of timber that they're cutting? Yeah, I, I will. Once we get the report of cut. Yeah. So I've already made a visit out. I went out on Friday yes. just to look at the I know. I'm going to the, lot. the woods again. Um, what will happen is um, we can check periodically or we'll wait for that report of cut. Mm -hmm. Once we get the report, we'll go. And it's and, and based on the stumpage and things, yeah. determine if that number is accurate, as close as it can be accurate, you know. Do either you, you or the Conservation Commission check to make sure that the cut is made where it's supposed to be and that people aren't cutting stuff down all over the place? That, that typically would be it. This here, though, again, it's specific to the roadway going into those four mm -hmm. lots. Mm -hmm. So I don't think those, based on the lot and the, the configuration of the lot. Okay, I realize that. We will, I, we will make sure that. I understand the state cripples us in the matters of uh, uh, cutting. Yeah. However, uh, I think it's mm -hmm. uh, premature uh, before the uh, status of the road is resolved. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comment or, or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? I'm opposed. Four to one. And um, on to D. Yep. Last item is a an application for a prorated assessment for 2014. Good. This has to do with the fire that took place at yep. 68 Lock Road in, on February 20th, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, we do is prorate the value of the, the building if it's destroyed completely. We, but anyway, we adjusted that accordingly. Um, it results in a refund through March 31st, that would, would equal $81.12 plus any applicable interest paid back from their 14 taxes. I'll make a motion that we go with the uh, assessor's recommendation. I'll second it. Nice job, Ed. Any that. discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Drive safely on the way home. I think we'll be back later. Oh, oh that's right. right. That's right. Thank you. Um, the approval of minutes for March 9th. Make a motion to approve it. Sir, a second. Yes, sir. Mr. Bean, all those in favor? Unanimous. And the minutes of March 16th, 2015? So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, we have a correction of those minutes. Uh -huh. um, Council reviewed them today, and uh, he requests that... Uh, when you do the approval, uh, the last sentence be stricken and that the following language be inserted instead. Quote, the town public session was adjourned at around, at around 7.57 p.m. The minutes of the non public session having been duly sealed under RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 3 and the public session was not resumed. Incorporating such, I maintain that motion. Okay. And for the second, also. And this is what date, gentlemen? Uh, March 16th. 16th. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. No, not oh. unanimous. I'm opposed. Okay. Four to one. <laughs> this is Wolseley opposed. The town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the completed warrant for the 2015 annual town meeting has been reviewed, and the individual warrants that passed have been assigned to departments for completion. Those departments have been instructed to begin the process of preparing bids, the majority of which are scheduled to be released during the month of April in preparation for late spring and summer construction and completion. Additional figures, uh, and I've received some more today that are not included in this, uh, have been received from departments, and we are still awaiting final figures. That being a total expense for snow operations through February and March, uh, or $446,515.70. The governor, and I'm sure everybody's heard this by now, uh, the governor, we are told, has requested that the president declare Storm Juno a natural disaster. Should that occur, 
We will be prepared to itemize uh, the first of February storm for possible reimbursement at 75% rate from the federal government. Uh, we're not sure that's going to be approved, but he, she has asked. Uh, there is a question as to whether or not they're going to combine uh, all three storms together into one. That's a question we don't have an answer to as of yet. Um, I will tell you that um, we've gone through, and I've got a, 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 just a, a stack of things here. Everything that's in that warrant, uh, we have gone to the diff different departments on, the different petitioners, and asked for the information that's necessary to bring those items into fruition uh, so that we can present them back to the board. It's important that we, uh, we in fact, get there so we can get that work done as early as possible and get the work completed. Um, you should have received a report from the assessing department, or excuse me, from the finance department dealing with um, a line item by line item review of all the open uh, warrant articles, capital outlay warrant articles. It looks something like this mm -hmm. uh, this past week, so you should have that. Uh, we are still working on um, equipment and uh, various other things that, that need to be purchased and we're preparing bids for those. I know the fire department has uh, requested that uh, they receive some assistance in, in preparing the bids, the final bids for the fire equipment that's to be purchased. I will inform the board that the district, the solid waste district, has requested that the household hazardous waste day uh, for the spring be held on May 29, 2015 from 8 a.m. to 12 noon and they're requesting it be held in Hampton, and the recommendation is that it be held under control in the, in the public works yard, not behind the fire station. That way we can restrict any spills that may occur to a controlled area without drainage. And we can lock them up down there if we need to. Um, or we can put them through the compact if we have to. Uh, it's, uh, it's important that um, we get that done. As you know, we're out of the district as of uh, June 31st or June 30th, and uh, we will not have another opportunity until the following year to have a household hazard waste day. So mm -hmm. we don't want to be picking up that material out on the road. So I would ask the board's permission uh, to, in fact, hold that day, uh, household hazard waste day, on that day, which mm -hmm. is May 29th from 8 to noon at the public works yard. Um, We've also tentatively scheduled, subject to board approval, a meeting with our state senator and our state representatives for April 13th at 7 p.m. at your regular board meeting. Uh, they requested to be here, and uh, we've indicated that uh, we sent them out the letters. I hope that's okay with you, uh, so we can have them in right after the, uh, the switchover of the bills in the House and Senate, so that we'll have an idea where things are going. <coughs> if you have not read the municipal bill, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, there is a substantial amount of information contained therein um, with regards to the $109.9 million deficit in the highway fund. <laughs> um, we apparently are going to be able, and I've got my fingers crossed, are going to be able to receive our highway block grants funds because they're guaranteed by the Constitution. But it appears, only appears, because it hasn't been confirmed as of yet, uh, that the money that was earmarked uh, when we increased the gas tax last year, or a year and a half ago at this point, uh, that was supposed to be added to those funds are no, is no longer coming to the towns. The state is going to confiscate those dollars. Uh, they're also going to confiscate <laughs> a number of other things if the cuts continue. Uh, one of those things is that they will cease maintaining 2,500 miles of roads and 1,000 bridges that will be left to municipalities to maintain <coughs> and, and plow, salt, sand, and do whatever. Uh, there are a number of other things. And I, I really think you've got to read through this. There's, there's millions and millions of dollars that uh, is at stake here for various things that are going on, should those cuts actually take place. So, And I have sent that, uh, that information to you. Um, That's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the town manager? Mr. Bridal? Do you need a motion on the hazardous waste? Yes, sir, I do. I'll make a motion that we uh, hold the hazardous waste on May 29th, 8 to 12 at DPW. I'll 
Second. Mr. Wardell. All those in favor? Give me a discussion on it. Or oh, you want to have please, it? Yeah. yeah. Now, last year we had problems, right, Fred? <coughs> last two years we've had problems. Okay. So we're going to have tighter controls on this down there? I mean, it's, it's at Public Works, but I mean, do we feel like we're going to be able to control it better down there? Yes, we are. And uh, there are a number of things that, that we have to guarantee, and that is there, there should be. There shouldn't be any spills, but there was last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that material got into the drain system. That's why I want to hold it someplace where we don't have drains. Uh, obviously, we don't want that material escaping anywhere. Uh, we're going to have very tight controls down there, and we probably will ask the state to come and inspect since it's the same vendor. Okay. Yeah. Again, I just want to make sure that we're really oh, yeah. on I top of it. The show don't, for don't want any discussion. trouble. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mrs. Wesley? Fred, is that the number 11 NHMA legislative report that you're referring to? I think it is. I believe it is. Uh, We've already started passing it around the budget committee. It so. is. No, it's number 12. Oh, number 12, because 11 was bad, too. Uh, yeah, 11 was terrible and 12 was worse. Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bean? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, Fred, I've been... Uh, watching very closely what's going on up in Concord also mm -hmm. and keeping track. And if, if the budget goes through as is, which it probably won't, hopefully we get our fingers crossed, it'll be a disaster for transportation and stuff. So I think it's really incumbent on all of us to uh, pay attention exactly to what's going on and try and make some kind of uh, impact up there, which is difficult, we know, <laughs> very difficult. But I mean, to, to be up to date with our reps and our state senator so that, uh, you know, we don't get, lose that gas, the total increase, and that we get something passed that we can live with and that we can continue to keep our roads in good shape. Well, it's crucial to it, stay up to date on it. It is. I talked with um, uh, Senator Stiles, and she said that it's unlikely that it will just go on quite like what they're talking about right now. I would say there's that still it's still plenty. Of, if anyone has any comments, there's still plenty of time to make. Plenty of time, but let's make them. Take some action. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they are discussing it. And she would welcome it. I'm sure. Can I have one more two. <coughs> yes. Frick, on the, uh, the the Warren articles and the bids going out for the Warren articles. Yes. On the high street stuff. Yes. Are there specifications in when that can take place, or? Uh, yes, we're not going to allow that to take place in the middle of summer, obviously, okay. because it just can't happen. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at is is allowing night work, uh, simply because that is one of the most critical intersections in town, and, and uh, we'll have to work with state DOT uh, and Department of Safety to try to shut down some of the truck traffic that comes through town. Uh, coming both north and south off Route 107 and Seabrook and, and at the uh, interchange in Portsmouth. Um, we're obviously going to have a detour involved in this, and we do not want to be running those big trailer trucks through areas of the community where residences are located, <coughs> because they run 24 hours a day. That's just not going to be a helpful thing to do. Right, so we're going to stay right on top of that one, right? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. When oh, I got one more. When, when are you looking to do Exeter Road? What's Exeter Road, I have told the Public Works Department I want Exeter Road done before the 4th of July. Uh, that does depend upon uh, the availability of a contractor to uh, accept that work by then. But that's the first <coughs> thing that's going out the door is Exeter Road. Any other comment for the town manager's reports? Seeing none, we... Uh, is it okay with the board if we do the selectman scores after we take... The ones where the people are sitting here. Please. Okay, so we will move to award a bid uh, for the waste and recycling <coughs> disposal and transportation. Mr. Chairman, the board has received a written recommendation from the Director of Public Works uh, to award the uh, bid to Eco Maine and Triano, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Triano Transportation. Uh, as the ana the analyzed low bidder, I believe you received a a plethora of information uh, regarding that um, and all the bidders um, through the district and, and otherwise. 
Mr. Brado? Looking at it, and of course we heard from the gentleman earlier, um, I, I guess I got to go with the, uh, the public works director uh, and his recommendation on this. Okay, Mrs. Wilson. I didn't, uh, I think, receive the, the uh, pile of information that you appear to have there, Fred, but I did get the recap. I think it looks like Rusty has just the recap as well. Um, I have no problem at all going with um, Eco Main and Triano, uh, effective July 1st, 2015. That's the recommendation. Mr. Bean? Mm -hmm. Nothing, sir. And Mr. Wardell. Uh, I see the recommendation. I read through that, and I'm just, are we sure that we did it properly? Uh, we've had it analyzed by four different agencies, and okay. uh, the, the figures come back the same. <clears throat> okay. So, we, so we we're have confident that what, what we've done is was bid out properly and everything? And uh, We didn't do the bidding, but... But I mean the proposals <coughs> and everything? Yes. Yep. We've had council review it. Um, and, and everyone is in agreement that, uh, in fact, we re-ran we it today. And uh, everyone is in agreement that that is correct. Okay, then I can go with it. So is there a motion? So a motion to accept the recommendation of the Public Works Director is in reference to the Waste and Recycling Disposal and Transportation Office? Sir. <coughs> I'm going to stipulate the, the specific name of the companies. I think that should be included in the uh, yes. Triano, yes. Triano, Triano. Triano and Ecomane. Eco 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 Is that a second, Mrs. Wolseley? Sure. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And Number three is lease for a berm embankment on town property 60 and 62 Glade Path, Glade Path Condominium Association. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, this is a, another one of those where uh, they are putting in a stone, a small stone revetment on the edge of their property. It's very small. Uh, as you remember, I believe the board had said that there would be a, a very reduced rate for these small stone revetments on the, uh, the marsh side of properties, since they're not like the ocean side of properties. Uh, they have completed all the requirements uh, in accordance with the selectman's regulations, and we would suggest strongly that the selectman approve uh, the request and, and we move forward with it so they can begin construction. A motion? I want to ask a, yep. and, and I'm just confirming that includes the fabric as well. It includes everything that was in the spec. That's right. correct, from okay. conservation. Right. Yes. Any other comments? A motion? I make a motion that we and accept it. A second. Second. By Mr. Bridal. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Number four is amend section 805-45A limit of 20 miles per hour for school zones. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you did uh, three of these <coughs> two weeks ago, and um, even though we knew the signs were there, we forgot to put Winnicott kind of Road in, and uh, so we're, we'd like you to add that, Winnicott kind of Road, both sides, from the Westley Lot line of Citizens Bank to Academy Avenue. It is currently posted mm -hmm. at 20 miles an hour school zone, and uh, we think it needs to belong in the regulations so that we can uh, properly enforce it. Okay. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Rydell. Can I have a question just real yes. quick? Yes, sir. When this is posted as a school zone, is that 20 miles an hour while school's in session? Yes, sir, that's correct. That's, so it's not 20 miles an hour all the time, no. It's, it's just, just while school's in session. That's correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Number five is 31 33 Ocean Boulevard discussion of bonding for off site improvements. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Public Works Department has reviewed <coughs> the requests for, uh, that, that were approved by the Planning Board, referred to the Board of Selectmen for review and, and approval. Uh, dealing with the, the three items that you see, bonding of off-site improvements, sidewalk modifications and maintenance, and building, lighting, and street light illumination. Uh, 
You received a memorandum from me summarizing the information once I received the information from the Department of Public Works. Uh, the major operative item here is the bid, uh, the uh, bond, excuse me, uh, which is recommended at $16,385. That's via the Public Works Department and it's, it's review of the, uh, the work to be done. Uh, and it's shown as item 14 of the Planning Board Letter of Conditions of Approval. Uh, the applicant shall appear before the Board of Selectmen for approval of bonding for public off-site improvements prior to filing with a site plan with the Registry of Deeds. The Department of Public Works has reviews, reviewed the proposed work approved by the Planning Board and recommends that the bond for off-site improvements be in the amount of 16385 and it be in the name of the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen. Item number two, the sidewalk construction at Ocean Boulevard requires a state DOT permit be issued before work may commence. A copy of the issued permit shall be filed with both the Planning Board and the Hampton Public Works Department before work begins. And item number three, as in previous cases where a sidewalk is present, for a redevelopment of property on Ocean Boulevard, the selectmen have required that the project light the sidewalk in front of the property with wall packs and all street lights, if any, from the project side of Ocean Boulevard be eliminated at the developer's expense. We recommend the same here, and that's our recommendation, or Public Works' recommendation. Mr. Bridal? Um, I went through his letter and, and looked at it. I, I ain't got no problems with it. I'll make a motion if you want me to, to uh, accept the uh, town manager's recommendations on item one, two, and three as referenced uh, 31 and 33 Ocean Boulevard. Why don't we hear uh, comments from the other people? Okay. Mrs. Wolsey? I have questions. Um, on page one of the January 14th present, should we have the applicants up here so they can sit in the audience? Good evening. Uh, approval of the proposed water connection by Aquarian Water Company. I'm assuming, Joe, that that is connecting to the uh, existing Aquarian pipe, nothing to do with the hydrant. Help me out. Uh, yes, that's just connecting uh, connecting the new building to the the existing water line and uh, and the fire line. Okay, and the sewer as number seven says a sewer <coughs> permit shall be applied for prior to construction. Uh, that. What's on the lots now? It's two, let me see, I thought I read it in here. It's a lot, lot merger. <coughs> <coughs> so you're going to go to 12 condominium units from, what's there now, two units? Seven cottages. There's seven cottages, and there was a, a building that used to have five condos or five Okay, so the sewer, the new sewer buy-in charge will apply just to the excess in, the, in the 12 yes. units. Okay. Um, number 11 says an impact fee in the amount of 1898 per dwelling unit is hereby assessed and is required to be paid, et cetera. Um, school impact fee, I'm assuming. It's just not stipulated school impact fee. It is school. Fee. Okay. It is school. It would be nice if it was stipulated there. I'm not criticizing you, Joe. Okay. Um, number 20, snow shall be trucked off site once designated snow storage areas reach capacity. We've had an awful problem this winter, as you know, and it's an issue certainly with conservation at this point in time. But the snow storage areas, I do like the way you put that once the snow storage reaches capacity, it will be trucked off, um, trucked off to where God knows. Um, do you think the snow storage set up on this lot is going to be adequate? I mean, yeah, I know we've had a bad winter, but right. under normal circumstances? I think it is because the um, I drove around a little bit this winter to look at some of the sites, and mm -hmm. what I was noticing was that there's a, uh, uh, it's really still not a, you know, it's not a year-round use at the at the beach, and a lot of people were using their parking lot, mm -hmm. and I drove into a, a couple of sites, and there was, you know, two or three cars mm -hmm. on the property, and uh and, w and the condominium association tends to handle itself if they, if everyone's using, if everyone's living there full time and they need every parking space, they're going to have to truck it off because mm -hmm. uh, there's just limited space. If they're not there and there's units are empty just most of the winter, they're going to probably just use the parking lot. To the is this going to be seasonal occupancy or year round? It'll be year round, year but it's round. Uh, realistically it's not. And then yet everywhere. 
23 says the applicant shall complete a lot merger. So you're going to make the existing two lots into one yes. big lot. Still have the same address, 3133 probably? We're going to be uh, I'm going to using 33 Ocean Boulevard okay. as an address. Is it going to have a name like Seaside uh, Heaven or something? It will. The condominium will have a name for sure. Oh, the condominium. Will. Yes. Okay. And I just want to see if I can. That's it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bean. No, sir. And Mr. Wardell. The three things that the selectmen are responsible for is fine with us. Yes. Rusty's made a motion. I second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. And good night. Number six is uh, 377 Ocean Boulevard. Do you want to join us at the table? Oh, I thought Warren was here. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, the recommendations received up from Public Works are fairly consistent with the ones we just read. Item one, <clears throat> as in previous cases where a sidewalk is present for a redevelopment of property on Ocean Boulevard, the selectmen have required that the project light the sidewalk in front of the property with wall packs or other <coughs> lighting <coughs> and all street lights, if any, on the project site of Ocean Boulevard be eliminated at the developer's expense. We recommend the same here. In accordance with item two on the planning board's letter of conditions, the crosswalk at the entrance of the site and between the tip, the tip downs shall be maintained painted by the owner on an annual basis. Additionally, the owner shall initially seal the concrete sidewalk in the first year when cured. And additionally, thereafter, shall treat the sidewalk in accordance with the application of approved treatment materials to preserve the sidewalk. Item three, the Hampton Department of Public Works has reviewed the proposed work approved by the Planning Board and recommends <coughs> that the bond for off-site improvements be in the amount of $18,612 and be in the name of the Town of Hampton Board of Selection. Mr. Chairman, prior to the discussion, I would move that we approve 15 377 Ocean Boulevard with the applicant Warren Kelly of Kelly Properties, map 265, lot 20, in accordance with the dialogue from the town manager and his memorandum dated 18 March 2015 <coughs> to the board. Thank you, sir. Okay, any discussion? Mr. Bridal? No, no discussion. Mrs. Wilsley? I assume the same pertains to this lot, uh, Warren, wants no storage. Uh, it's a pretty narrow lot. You guys have accommodated that. The yes. asphalt being taken out of the end of the property? Yes, the, uh, the buffer zone. Right, the buffer has been approved through the special permit process. The okay. uh, impacts in the buffer have been uh, approved, and there is pavement coming out, mm -hmm. and there's buildings going in, but the pavement's going to be further from the marsh. Okay. The sewer buy-in charge will apply here as well? Yes. Okay. And how about the impact, school impact fees? Because I they just didn't notice any mention. Okay. So it's pretty consistent with what's been happening. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did you have any further comments? No. I just have one question. Out. On the painting of the crosswalk, and is that all the way across the street, or just the, just across our entrance? Just across uh, our entrance. So right. people walking know that there's a mm -hmm. kind of road yeah. Yeah. now okay. there. So they get hit. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like that. <coughs> is there a second to Mr. Bean's motion? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. So, I, do we go, should we go to the selectman's goals now, or want to finish the rest of these? Yeah, and I can just get rid of them. Yeah. It would be best to go on with the goals. You don't have anybody waiting yeah. then. Okay, um, for 86 Woodland Road, we're going to be going back to the other new business. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, this is held over from February 2nd, 2015, mm -hmm. as an open item. Uh, it's been discussed before by the board, and it's been placed on hold. Uh, the recommendations are as follows. The selectmen have already accepted uh, and concluded a street name for the subdivision Robinson Way at their meeting on February 2. 
item two. Two questions were contained in this one item. First, the town does not own any fire hydrants. They are all owned by Aquarium Water Company. So uh, ownership of hydrants is, is immaterial for as far as we're concerned. Second is the question of who should pay the annual rental for the fire hydrant. Since it will be recommended, subject to board approval, that the street be a private way, see item five. It will be re the responsibility of the private association to pay the annual fee for the fire hydrant unless the board approves to pay that expense on a private street. Item three, subject to the board's action on item two above, that's the hydrant, regarding the status of the roadway, public or private, it is recommended if the street is to be a private way that the homeowners association should pay for the street line. <coughs> If the street is to be a public way, then the homeowners association should pay for the street lighting unless the underground wiring is enclosed in conduit from the electrical power source to the street light or lights, in which uh, case the town should pay for the street lighting expense. The conduit and the lighting fixtures uh, and bases are to be gifted to the town by appropriate written documentation in accordance with uh, the uh, board uh, acceptance by the board under statute. Number four, the Hampton Public Works Department recommends that the bond for the construction of the so-called public improvement be set at $430,000 and the bond be written in the name of the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen. It is recommended that the board approve <coughs> bonding figure subject to inspections and normal verifications that the work uh, was accomplished according with the approved plans and the receipt of written verification of the inspections from the planning board's inspector and the Department of Public Works inspector. And then number five, the current <coughs> approvals, these are the current planning board approvals, require the developer to convert covenant, covenant excuse me, reading too fast here, I'm a line ahead of myself, covenant that no salt will be used in the roadway during the winter as instructed by the planning board approval. I call to the board's attention that if the roadway is constructed, there is a 5% downgrade mm -hmm. from Woodland Road. This is a dangerous grade during icing conditions. If the roadway is to be a public highway and public works is prohibited from salting during freezing weather, mm -hmm. it really assumes potential liability that is unwanted. The other item that is a problem area is the placement of test wells within the layout of the roadway. The town should not accept the roadway with test wells located within it that are drilled to or near groundwater. The potential for contamination is high. Drilling test wells to groundwater is a poor idea at best. Potential liability will exist, and that potential liability will not disappear, but will be enhanced if the town owns the roadway, and the roadway is responsible for contamination of the wells. Given the potential for liability, to the town is recommended that the road be private and not public. I will so move to start a discussion. Mr. Bridal? I'll second. Um, I'd like to hear some more discussion going first. So well, I'm going to. Yeah, this, we're, this is the discussion. Yeah, I understand that, but I'll, I'll leave Mary Louise right now. I, uh, I've got nothing right now. Oh, uh, okay. Mrs. Wolseley? I agree with the memo that the manager has presented. I will uh, not countenance any acceptance of liability on this property by the public. It will need to be clearly uh, stipulated in any documents that the uh, annual rental of the fire hydrant will go upon whatever association is uh, set in place. I assume that the town is going to require copies of the association documents and um, it will be the uh, responsibility of whatever private association to pay the annual fire hydrant rental uh, and I uh, absolutely concur with the manager that this uh, shall not be in, accepted as a public road. Can I just ask um, Mr. Sure. Welch, is there any are other fire hydrants being um, Paid for by no, the private individuals. That when people yeah. have a house, is yeah. anyone right. else yeah. paying? Schooner Landing. Uh, yeah, a private private developments that are not public. The the development pays for the hydrants. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Schooner well, Landing is a good example. What about private homes? Private homes. 
I don't. Private homes. Well, aren't there aren't going to be. These are homes on so Woodland what? Road. So they're going to be paying their taxes and they're not going to get fire service mm -hmm. unless if, they pay if, for if it. The road, if you decide the road is to be a private road, then we don't have any jurisdiction there. So are there any hydrants on any other private roads being oh, paid for? There are a number. There are. Yeah, there are. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something this board has to be aware of. There right. are other people, other developments that they're, you know, we're paying, they're going to have their taxes. And, you know, other people, that when they pay their taxes, they expect to have a water hydrant as to be part of their tax service. I just want to make that point clear. Right. Did you have any other things? I think I have expressed your opinion. Uh, I'd like to hear from uh, our panel, please. Okay. All right. The... Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, when we started this project, uh, we started looking at the town's ordinance. We, uh, <coughs> the town of Hampton has an aquifer <coughs> protection ordinance. Mm -hmm. It tells you exactly how to develop sites that are in the aquifer protection area. Mm -hmm. We followed all those rules. We have a subdivision, uh, standard subdivision, no waivers, uh, no variances. Uh, in the aquifer protection, we had to increase the lot sizes. Uh, we've had to do everything the town has asked us. Um, <coughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's fair that this is the one subdivision that is going to be a private road subdivision when there's other subdivisions in the aquifer that I've worked on that Peter's worked on uh, that are being built right now uh, that are not subject to the same thing uh, this would be the only subdivision that I know of in the recent history that's going to be a private road uh, because it's in the aquifer there's a uh, I did fielding lane in the aquifer, we did uh, wayside farms. There's one being built right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's presidential estates. There's many, many subdivisions in town, um, and I think the lack of the fact you can't use salt when we had to. We have a drainage system and a treatment system for our road water. All of that drainage system is treated to the a higher degree than any of the other subdivisions because now the town has a new set of rules on how you treat stormwater and it's it mimics the state's AOT rules which just came into effect around 2008 so all the subdivisions approved before that aren't designed to our standard yet they are town roads and whether the town uses salt or sand is not up to us I guess on that. Uh, but if you're been required that we only use sand but you're going to use salt on Woodland Road Little River Road uh, all these roads that are even as close, if not closer, to the wells doesn't seem to make sense. If, if the concern is the wells, then you shouldn't be using salt in any of those roads, That's according right. to your aquifer protection. Right. So then we're no different than any of the existing roads that are out there. And I think it's uh, when Mr. Dockham looked at this property, this item never came up during the review. Uh, he's since purchased the property. It's moving forward with the uh, design, and now he's going to be held accountable to a private road for five lots mm -hmm. where these five homes have to maintain this road in perpetuity uh, paving uh, fixing anything uh, on that road and it uh, and I, it doesn't I've never seen it before in town it doesn't seem right to me that uh, if we design it per the town code then you can just decide at the last minute that you're not going to accept it um, I can understand the wells uh, the test wells those were something the planning board asked us to put in uh, in Aquarian those could be moved out of the right-of-way. Uh, I understand the concern in the right-of-way, and it, it, uh, it does make sense if they get damaged. Um, but they could easily be put on private property as well, um, in easements right across on the other side of the road. So they don't have to be put underneath the road? We were, uh, no, not at all. The, um, we were proposing them initially along the property line that is closest between our road and the wells. The wells, just so you're, everyone's clear, are over 600 feet away. Uh, the, the town, the, the wells have a 400 foot radius around municipal water systems. That radius doesn't even touch our land. It barely touches our neighbor's land. Uh, so it's, we're 600 feet from the wells. There's many closer structures to those wells than ours. Um, and the, uh, so I, I don't know. I just think it's I think it's tough on Mr. Dockham, who's gone in forward in good faith. Our project designed it per your code. If you had a different code, he would have had to design it to whatever code you have, and he did that. Uh, and he's approved through the town. The st I mean, the, the planning board, the conservation, the state, 
and now he's um, trying to get started on construction and finding out that he's going to have a you know homeowner association bill where these people have to put up hundreds of dollars a month to get the same service that the uh, that all the other residents have in this area and right next door. Do you have any other um, questions, Mr. Bean? Yes, I do. So <coughs> tell us where you differ from the town manager's uh, dissertation earlier and what you're looking for, please, specifically. Well, we, and we, if, uh, uh, do you have a copy of this? I do not. Can I provide this with you? Please. Yes. Could you go down that list? One we seem to have uh, completed fairly well for you. But um, that would be the name of the road? Uh, yes, we had a <coughs> the name. And there's two, three, four, and five there. I think the I think the big one really is the road ownership because if the the item two is the fire hydrants and I understand that will go whichever way the road goes. Uh, if it's a town road, I imagine that would be a uh, town hydrant, whereas the town pays for the fee. Um, item three is. Um, Can I stop you there on, on on the the ownership of the road? Yes. So your assertion is that you do not want to take ownership of the road. Correct. We don't think it's fair that the. You assert that you've met all approvals, state, local, and uh, larger um, regulatory bodies. You've been through the planning board process. It's all been approved. Yes. And now you uh, come to this and you do not feel that it should be a private road. That's correct. Okay. I would make a And you say there's other, uh, other projects that you've specifically worked on that are encumbered by the same challenges that are highlighted here that have been granted public road status. Correct, yes. And specifically those roads again are? The ones off the top of my head are, um, well, we did one right across the street from this, actually, called uh, Dalton Lane. Mm -hmm. um, what was that for? Uh, <coughs> That's not a public road. It's not accepted yet. Nope. Probably won't be it the way it is. <laughs> All right, that may not be a good example. But the uh, Fielding Lane was in the aquifer, Wayside Farms, uh, which is up by on, um, up off of Mill Road. And did you do those? I did, yes. Can you compare and contrast those with the uh, challenges that are articulated here tonight? I can. When we did uh, Wayside Farms, I probably remember the best. Uh, that one was uh, up off of Mill Road, and in the backyard is, was additional wells, uh, other wells that are owned by Aquarian. And uh, uh, I recall on that project uh, having no drainage system. At the time, Aquarian had a, uh, uh, <coughs> had a moratorium and wanted water. And they referred to it as we, we ended up piping the water right in towards the wetlands, towards their system, so because they needed water and uh, uh, for those wells. And uh, we have, so there's no drainage system, no treatment pond. Uh, this site has a high-tech bioretention pond, which is uh, something AOT has come up with and UNH has been testing uh, for stormwater treatment. It's one of the highest levels of stormwater treatment ponds you can have. 86 woodland? Yes. And, uh, and all of our stormwater from our road ends up in that pond. None of it, because the road's curbed. Uh, anything from the road is, and the road is all basically one, it's all downhill from 86 Woodland, so it all flows right towards into that pond, and it gets, everything gets captured and treated. Uh, so there's no water heading off our site towards the wells that doesn't go in the pond. Um, the, uh, so that's the, and there's, there's numerous other subdivisions that I didn't work on that are predate uh, mine. There's right next door is Hunter Drive. We have, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Hunter Drive, Bear Path, Alexander Drive. Uh, and there, there's many others too. And when they're, and I imagine anything dated, anything designed before you know, kind of the modern age of stormwater treatment probably has no treatment. You know, no uh, no stormwater system. Everything just runs off. Uh, and they've all been salted for years, sanded, however they've been handled for years. And uh, um, so I don't think there's, to my knowledge, there's been no issues in the town water and aquarium's water uh, system uh, from the years of development. Part of the, and to keep in mind with this aquifer, is it crosses Route 1. Uh, so it's not just this rural, somewhat rural area of, of the residential section of Hampton that's in the aquifer, uh, Route One's in the aquifer. Uh, I know the Brothers North Plaza, Ron Gillian's, all that area. That's all aquifer protection um, area, and we've gotten variances to do large commercial developments in the aquifer. Uh, and so it's 
Can you respond specifically to the grade and uh, what you do for a, a season such as this with uh, or what the town would do if the town had that property, how they would prevent uh, ice? The, I think the uh, I think the sanding is is probably adequate. There's other chemical. There's other um, items that are allowed to be put on there other than just sand. But if I think sand would be enough to uh, plow it, it's paved. It's going to get sun on it. Uh, I don't. I have a steep driveway. I don't. I don't sand it or salt it. Are you, you're a civil engineer. Yes. And you're confident that that would uh, um, address the issue, even in conditions such as this past winter. I am. Yes. Because there's a. There is a steep section of the road, which 5% is not really that steep, but the, uh, uh, at the beginning of the road, it's a, there's a flat area. We don't come right off of Woodland Road and do a 5% grade. There's a, there's a uh, level platform that's at like 2%, and then it slopes down. And, uh, and, I, and to be honest with you, I don't even, if the town were to salt it, I don't think there'd be an issue with it either, because there's other roads. Woodland Road's been salted for just as long as the... Uh, wells have been in existence and they're in the well road the well the driveway to the wells comes off of woodland road so i can't i still can't see how even salting our road would be a problem we have a treatment system at least where there is none thank you and just so uh, mr chen is a point of order because some of these other provisions are requisite on whether it's a public or private road or do you want to accept uh, a motion from any I have members a motion private? on the table oh, you do yes i do and well your motion is for this entire document and uh You've got to get to A before you get to passing that entire document, okay. and it's not specific enough. Yeah, let's finish the discussion and then we'll make the okay. Motion. Because I Thank can. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just make a statement. I mean, I, I just think that that things should be run fairly, and and that if we have ordinances and if they've gone by the ordinances and if there are other private roads that are paying hydrants, you know, and if it's been for the planning board stuff, I I, I just have a difficult time. Uh, if they've gone through all the hoops with this, and, and it, if it's done and, and the aquarium's looked at the wells and stuff, a difficult time, that's the thing. The only thing I, I would, is there anything on this, if it were a public road, could you go along with the conduit for the lighting fixtures? Yes, for sure. That I think that's a, well, I've, it's been a long time since anyone that I know of has been direct burying wire, but we would certainly uh, <coughs> conduit anything for the street lighting and the <coughs> the only thing I would add to the hydrants is I know there's um, I know there's private condominium developments that certainly take care of their wells. I mean their hydrants, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know of any private subdivision roads, to my knowledge, that are permanently private. You know, I know there's roads that have not been accepted, uh, but so that's one slight distinction here is that we're a subdivision designed under the town rules to be a town road. Whereas I know like uh, Schooner Landing or uh, Hampton Meadows, those are kind of new developments. Those roads will always be private and they'll always pay for their uh, hydrants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Bridal. Yep. The one part I have a hard time with is, is the, the sanding. Is, is it, what burden is that gonna put on our public works if, if we're requiring this one road in town to be sanded? Uh, but I know, understand that that's something that the planning board has put on. Um, and that's, so by being a uh, public road, how how do we, if, if that's one of the requirements is just to have sand on it, what kind of undue burden is that going to put on our public works? I, I met with Mr. Jacobs and discussed that very thing. He didn't see that as a problem as sending out a truck with just sand in it and not having salt, not just for this road, but some for the, some of the other roads in this town that shouldn't have salt. And he made he he and I discussed that last week actually. I have a Did you have others? No, uh, I, everybody else is pretty much asked. Okay, I have a follow up. Okay. First of all, as far as the retention pond. Who's going to be responsible for the maintenance of that? Some of you may remember Hampton Meadows, I believe, a fairly short time ago, had a problem with their pond because nobody was taking care of it. There was also an issue behind Canifer. What provisions are being made for the maintenance pond? Number two, the road to the wells comes off Little River Road. It does not come off Woodland Road. And where it comes off Little River Road, it is a much more level way. I had a conversation with a member of the planning board whom I shall not name 
when this uh, subdivision came up. And uh, I said to him, this is a, an aquifer protection zone in which I live, by the way. And uh, I see Hunter Drive, which was built. That was 23 or 33 acres, by the way, for something like 12 or 15 houses. They had a lot more land. And the uh, residences on Hunter Drive are being drowned out uh, down in the bottom. And I said, you allowed Hunter Drive and you allowed Springhead Lane. When are you going to wake up? And he said, well, we've already allowed them, so gee whiz, we can't tell other developers or turn other developers down. There's such a thing as understanding when you're banging your head on the wall and doing something that does not benefit the town. Uh, the 400-foot radius of the well is arbitrary. Uh, that's a line on a, uh, on a map. And the um, planning board, to the best of my recollection, because I was at those meetings, never looked at the map, never understood apparently or realized that the wells were there, and they are some of the primary wells for this town. I do not want responsibility at all for this development with possible contamination for whatever they put on the road, whatever fertilizers they put on their lawns, I do not want responsibility for a hydrant. I do not want any responsibility for a building in this sensitive uh, zone. And somebody better wake up here, and, and I'm talking to conservation and hopefully to planning, stop, stop this intensive building in the aquifer. There's no excuse for risking our wildlife and our natural resources and our water. I think this is a tremendous liability to this town unless it's made a private road. Okay. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Did you want to make a motion? I made the motion to have this become a private road, subsequent uh, uh, predicated on the manager's recommendation that he has stated here, and I believe I received a second. Who's the second? I second it for the discussion. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, Public Works, the town has a problem with this road because of the two things the planning board has done. Mm -hmm. <coughs> One is to require no salt. And, and, and you don't do that on a grade. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. 5% grade when it's completely iced over, as it has been some of our roads this winter. Uh, if it gets too cold, Salt won't work unless it's combined with sand. Um, you do need salt to melt the to melt the ice; otherwise, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, not only with people traveling up and down the roadway, but with our own equipment trying to traverse the roadway. It's just dangerous under the right conditions. The biggest problem, however, is the insistence of the planning board to drill two wells to groundwater. Now. <coughs> the first well is point zero zero at the beginning of the roadway from the, the information that we've been provided. And the second one is at 250 of the roadway. Now, yeah, one, I think one was at the end of the road. The way Aquarian was looking at it, there was one at the end of the road and one halfway down the road. And uh, At the end of the road, we were told, is at, is at Woodland Road. And the other one is halfway down the road, which is about, about 250 on the plan, we were told. Mm -hmm. right. In any event, since they're going to be in the layout of the roadway. When everybody's finished with these, there's an open conduit to the groundwater. Mm -hmm. Anything can be poured down that. It's a dangerous situation. Without having some dire control over it, if something happens, the town of Hampton and its taxpayers are going to be responsible for it, if that's a public road. If we don't. That wasn't what. I don't think that was the intent. And there are no other test wells in any subdivision in this town. None. Zero. Okay. You're setting a brand new precedent that has the potential. And I, I, you know, I was the manager in, in Seabrook. We had a situation there where somebody spilled something. And the town, for 16 years, had to do air stripping to try to clean it. They finally declared it to be a Superfund site. And the federal government is coming in with tens of hundreds of millions of dollars to try to fix it so their wells can continue to be used. This is an open invitation to problems. 
It's in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you want to put this up on private property, we don't have a problem with that because it's on somebody else's responsibility. But the planning board's insisted it be in the layout of the public road. You have to put it there unless they change their requirements. But so our, our objection is that it, because it puts liability on the taxpayers of this town that is not needed. I guess the, well, a couple things. The wells themselves were part of a uh, report from Aquarian, and everyone thought it was a good idea to have test wells. And if the resolution is that test wells are not a good idea, I think that can be uh, re-looked at. Oh, that really? was something that came up during the review. I know you were involved, I Mary Louise. It certainly believe. was, and the Aquarian offered to set in their own wells, which they would then have to monitor constantly. And the wells, as I understood it, was fur were further down the slope, and that expense would end up by falling on the rate payers. The expense would. Yeah. However, the wells don't. Yeah. Right. They're in a public road, a layout of a public highway, or yes, what was supposed correct. to be a public highway. Well, Bob agreed that he would put the wells in, and then I believe the <coughs> would, uh, would do ongoing testing of those wells. Uh, they what are they going to do when the testing's done? They were going to put on their own they wells. Were gonna, they were going to continually test their yearly, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I don't I, necessarily think the wells are needed. I mean, the monitoring wells are needed because they test their drinking wells on a regular basis for it state is. requirements. Uh, I, 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 I tend to agree with that statement, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why the, the test wells are there, but what I do know is it's an open invitation to mm -hmm. pollute the groundwater source at that location where each of those wells are. Yep. That's a bad policy. And if don't it require it anywhere else, it shouldn't be required here. If the, what you're saying is you'd be more open to accepting a town road if the wells were not in the road, then we can go back and look at that right. item. Well, think about this for a second, okay? When the developer is gone, an aquarium no longer needs the wells. Yes. Okay? They're there. They're on public property. They become our responsibility as a community. Mm -hmm. If anything goes wrong, mm -hmm. the community picks up the bill. And you have adjacent private wells, Fred, also. Well, and that could the, be contaminated. the potential is for if contamination gets into the, into the well itself, yep. and that's possible because they're there, yep. okay? It's a, it's a hole drilled in the ground with a casing. Mm -hmm. Contamination well, can go down the outside of the casing as well as the inside of the casing. Mm -hmm. So we're very concerned about that. We don't want somewhere down the road 25 years from now, someone <laughs> come along, the aquarium come along and say, you know, our wells are polluted down there. Yeah. And we just went up and tested your, and guess what, there's pollution in your well. So it had to come from you. So the town's responsible to clean it all up. Yeah. That's crazy talk. I mean, we, we shouldn't be doing this. Has anybody talked to the DES and, and, and asked them about what the, the, the problems potentially can be with pesometric devices being drilled into the groundwater at a high elevation next to a roadway? that's going to be traveled by automobiles and could have gasoline spills and oil spills and salt and sand and all. salt and sand is going to get trapped in this road whether we want to or not. They get into the well because it's off the side of the roadway mm -hmm. or the well gets damaged because of plowing yeah. and something gets into it. We're responsible. It, to answer your question, we have not spoke with DES about it because the requirement for the wells came from the town so we, we thought we were I don't think you can drill that well to groundwater without a DES permit, maybe even an EPA permit. Right. Well, monitoring wells get drilled all the time, but the the, uh, the recommendation from Aquarian came from their own hydrogeologist, Ray Talkington. I mean, he's the expert. We don't have hydrogeologists in my office, so if a, uh, he's the hydrogeologist for Aquarian and therefore, you know, basically the hydrogeologist for the town of Hampton because he does all their, inspect all their uh, work on their wells, so he was the one recommending the monitoring wells. They recommended the monitoring wells would be installed by them in their locations of their choosing, nothing to do with the road, because they are concerned about protecting that water source. That's a good concern. I think I suggest they, they put it someplace other than that, on what will be town property if you want the road accepted. I think that can I mean I assume that can be done. I can't the planning board will have to change the requirement. Right. And they I would like to there is in the in your offer protection district there are rules obviously um, there's a um, minimum lot size requirement that these lots are a third larger than the uh, underlying zone which we complied with there is a maximum lot coverage requirement that we can't have more than 25 percent of the lot well you you comply with all the requirements of the zone i know you do i'm going to get to one more that um, 
site drainage, all runoff from impervious surfaces shall be recharged on the site and diverted to the extent possible towards areas covered with vegetation of surface infiltration. Uh, roof water and foundation drains, if pre this includes roof and foundation drains if present. We've done all these items. The next one is where I don't think the town has required, uh, maybe the planning board has talked about the, uh, the salt, but it says use of de-icing chemicals. There shall be minimal, minimal use of de-icing chemicals on all public and private roads and parking lots within this district, and those compounds used shall be free of sodium and chloride to the extent possible. That means this applies to the whole aquifer, not just mm, our agree. road. So however, if there's if the town uses a low salt, uh, you're allowed to use salt, it says, uh, to the extent possible and a minimal amount. So they're looking for lower volumes of salt. And we don't use much in the way of salt. We do use low volumes. However, this particular road requires no salt, zero. Right. And the other chemicals you talk about all have adverse effects potentially in groundwater mm -hmm. if they're concentrated. So I think that might be something we'd have to, uh, if we have to go back to the planning board to address the condition on the wells, I think we should address this condition and at least we should be held to a standard stricter than your zoning ordinance. If this is required throughout the whole aquifer, um, then we would, I think, should be held to the same standard as the rest of the roads in town. I, I don't disagree with that, but you're being held to a different standard, which and is different requirements are being placed upon you that we don't have on any other road in that district. Right. I don't think it's fair to the town to have one road that has to be treated separately than uh, uh, all others when you have one public works and one big truck that's going to handle six, ten roads at a time. We will be sending out a separate truck for this road. That's just, just kind of the way it is because we, we do mix our salt and sand. It's not mixed, it's more sand than salt, but we don't, you know, this is a special requirement and we're going to have to specially take care of it. So would you, would you recommend that we go back to the planning board and ask for the conditions of the wells and the uh, no salt be lifted so that the road can be accepted as a well, town road? And my concern is with the wells. They shouldn't be, if they're going to be in a layout of a road, ultimately when that road becomes a public <coughs> road and the aquarium no longer needs them, and, uh, you know, potentially they're there, that, that hole going directly to groundwater is there as a conduit. It's an easy way to get to contamination in there. Put that off someplace where it can't get contaminated accidentally, mm -hmm. where it can't get hit by a truck, or it can't, uh, somebody can't have an accident next to it and their gasoline tank spill or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have these problems all over New England all the time. <coughs> Mr. Wardell. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question just on the wells. <coughs> Was it a chlorine that said to put them there? No. Well, I'm asking them. The, to, as far as I know, the location hasn't been set in stone, so to speak. The, uh, there was a, uh, I saw it, there was a file came across from Aquarian saying suggested locations. I think they thought they were putting them in the, what I think were the best locations because we have a, uh, let me show you on a plan. There's a, the way the road is set up, there's a, approaching uh, the way the, the road is set up there's a uh, there's an angle right here and one location is they thought this was a good spot because it's further from the road yeah the, the road follows the curve of the road here mm -hmm. you know follows the curve of this and so this well would be you know, 15 feet from the edge of the road so they thought that was a good location the other spot they highlighted was here it was actually on private property, but to my knowledge, they have not said this exactly. I don't see why this well couldn't be here on this lot, and this well could be is all out of the right of way in this drainage easement, and it could be right here. So, and so we can we can revisit that with the query for sure, moving a well, monitoring well 50 feet when you're talking about groundwater, I can't imagine it has that much effect because you're... And who did they say was going to pay for it? The, the, there was a whole report done by Aquarium. <coughs> uh, they were asked to review this subdivision, and then there was uh, a conclusion area with recommendations. And those recommendations included these wells. And then the discussion was that uh, was Bob would put the wells in. They would take over future monitoring of the wells because they don't want they don't want homeowners 
yeah. Yeah. monitoring the wells or an association monitoring the wells. They they know how to do it. They have the personnel. They monitor. You know, so they agreed to do that forever. Yes. Yeah. They I, were I happy to have them, so they had another. They were actually happy to have them installed and on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had a hard time thinking that aquarium would allow it to to you know just get contaminated and give up on it. Uh, it'll and be I had a hard time, you know, accepting that point of view. I'm, I mean, I understand the protection, and, and I also just think that they should be held to the same standards as other people. Which is the 400 um, foot um, thing. They have no problem with it. They I mean, said that I'd that's like a standard for the whole ordinances. United States. Right. That's the, the 400 foot radius is the largest radius you can have on a well in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. it's, it's based on how many gallons you pull out of the ground. And that's the largest. Um, largest one. I have a question. Mrs. Wilson. How does the water know when it's reached the 400 feet? You're well, talking about water which flows downhill. At least that's what I learned in school. That's the big consideration here. And Aquarian is looking to acquire more land in that area to protect the wells. And just because we've been stupid about not protecting our aquifer in the past doesn't mean that we have to continue to be. Any other questions or comments? The biggest concern I have is, is, is the, 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 the sand. <coughs> you know, having having to uh, in, in separate standards, I would rather see I would rather see it go back to the planning board and have them modify it to our what whatever the town's recommendations are. Because if we have certain developments that have special needs for each one, to tax our public works with doing different things, that's the problem I have. Mm -hmm. So if they go back to the planning board, it, would it be better to hear this again in the future? or They'd have to come back here if the conditions changed. And if those conditions went away, then there's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So or at least in public works and standpoint. Is that what you gentlemen have in mind? Well, I think for tonight, yes. Yes, OK. We, yeah. It's about Mary Louise's. Yeah, well, I wait one second, too. Once again, and this goes for all developments, once the developer develops, he leaves, he goes away, he doesn't live there, and no one inspects the premises, no one goes into the neighborhood, and no one looks in the yard, and no one sees salt, and I understand these are propane, are these going to be propane powered? Because that scares the hell out of me too, you're going to have propane heat in there? That was part of the discussion, Not you're not going to be running it was part of the discussion yes. as being a possibility, not as being. Yes. Uh, I don't think that's I mean, part of the issue here tonight. Because we're going to have we're going to have no control okay. over this. So we're no going to come back again, from what I understand. Now we're going to vote on Mrs. Wolseley's um, motion. And what is the motion specifically? And why don't we just rescind the motion if they're coming back? That's no, what I, would recommend, I, we, but. I think we need to clarify the status of this. There's no sense in having them go back and forth like a yo-yo unless they understand what they're doing. And I think the status of the road as a public or private road needs to be established out of the gate. I think it should have been established before this. And I don't want responsibility for that hydrant. I don't want responsibility for that road. And this is liability with a capital L. So does everybody recommend what her motion is? Right, let's hear the motion again. Motion is that given the potential for liability to the town, it is recommended that the roadway to be, be private and not public. And that is the final sentence of the town manager's memo. And do you still second it, Rusty, or would you rather than come back? I mean, I can second it and then vote it down either way that I can. Well, you have a chance. Do you want to withdraw your second? I, I just would like to see these guys come back with it. So, so I don't see, so I will send my, my second. Okay. Is there a second? <laughs> Seeing none. Liability. I'll see you again, gentlemen. Yes, that's exciting. I had a uh, quick question on the bonding. I know that's part of all of this. Um, obviously, the road has been set up to be developed in a certain aspect. The outline that the board has just talked about has either been rescinding the no salt uh, and the well situation, and those are really the only two criteria other than uh, to be a public road. Um, so. I'm asking, can the bonding be moved forward and we readdress these two issues of whether it becomes public or private? Mr. Or start construction? Well, I'd like to, yeah. 
What's, I mean, if we're doing everything according to everything's going to either be private or public in those two conditions that you talked about, and we're going to rectify those, why can't we? Well, the bonding figure does stand on its own. It's an individual item, so um, you've got to get through all the rest of the requirements in order to use it. But how much is the bond amount? Four hundred thirty thousand dollars. I would move a bond amount for four hundred thirty-six thousand. Thirty. Four hundred thirty thousand for eighty-six Willow Road. I second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? So that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Last one, Mr. Chairman. Is the Penn Street. Penn Street. Where is that? Um, right here with the map. It's the last thing on old business. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the Public Works Department has issued the report with regards to the project on N Street and it's 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 26 End Street. Um, and there are three items. <coughs> Is it three or four? There's four items. Um, final report of DPW has been received. The department recommends approval of the request to work within the public way, <coughs> excuse me, provided the town's regulations are observed in all respects including the erection of barricades and the provision of police details as required by the Chief of Police, or to be in accordance with the Planning Board's approved plans. Item 2. The poll petition be approved pending approval of the, uh, by Town Council, provided that the petition is in accordance with the Town's and, and taxing regulations. Item 3. The proposed sidewalk modifications be approved per the plans approved by the Planning Board. The underground electrical system be installed in conduit that is encased in concrete for its entire length within the sidewalk. Trench refilling will be accomplished in accordance with the Department of Public Works regulations and inspections. Appropriate barricades be installed for the protection of the public and appropriate police details be on site as specified by the Chief of Police. And number four, the bond amount for the outside improvements be in the amount of $30,011 to be held in the name of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. And uh, did you gentlemen have something to say about this? Um, I don't think so. The, I guess the, the requirement to encase in concrete something new, which we were just discussing. Uh, that's just for the section under the uh, under the sidewalk sidewalk itself. Right. Yeah. Well, it's on private property. It's not a, mm -hmm. not a real concern. But yeah. Did you want to say something, Mr. Gerald? Um, yes, uh, Fred. This sidewalk that's uh, talked about here. This is one that's on town property. Yes. And this will be concrete. Yes. And is uh, you've articulated last week as to the development of 128 Ashworth that yeah. there is to be an annual maintenance. This is a condominium development. That's right. in the town's regulations, so they'll have to abide by that. Right. And so there would be an annual treatment. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, last week I had uh, made the point to the board that when this situation arises, there is a continuing involvement where an entity that's not the town meaning the, the condominium association, comes onto town property and performs something, mm -hmm. uh, a maintenance function that would include sealing. Uh, that function exposes the town, albeit for a short period of time annually, <coughs> potential liability on the town because it's working on town property and could affect pedestrians and so forth. So I had recommended to you last week and recommend again this week that uh, the condition uh, be clearly noted on the site plan and stated in the condominium documents. It probably already is DPW specifications. But also that uh, we have insisted on an indemnification agreement where the condominium association would indemnify and hold the town harmless for their activity, that they have the obligation to treat the sidewalk, uh, and if done in a negligent way, we want not to be held liable. So that. Uh, we want to be named and uh, named insured on their policy of liability insurance, mm -hmm. and so it's similarly to what we articulated last week. Um, I would appreciate it if the board could include those as conditions. We also need a permit from Public Works every year when they do the work, mm -hmm. which requires bonding and security. Mm -hmm. 
incorporating uh, the town attorney's remarks regarding uh, risk management and uh, the town manager's most recent remarks, uh, I would move that we approve uh, the memorandum dated 17 March 2015 for 141618, 2022, and 26 Street. <laughs> Items one through four. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Bridal. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Mosley. Just a quick comment. It's amazing after all these years that we're finally seeing to the ceiling of the Town Creek sidewalk. So we can go <laughs> modern. It's okay. amazing. Mr. Bean. No, sir. Mr. Wardell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, I, I apologize for something. Uh, when you approved the minutes earlier this evening of last week, uh, in reference to that item I just mentioned, I, I see that th that's quoting uh, a motion by Selectman Bean merely to accept a bond amount, and um, I am sure that he made a motion last week, similar to tonight, uh, to uh, implement the town manager's recommendations as well as my own. I, I think it was not simply to uh, approve the bond, it was to adopt those. I, th I think the motion is not fully stated in the minutes, and I'm sorry I didn't pick up on that earlier. If the minutes of last week could simply be amended to reflect a similar motion to Mr. Bean's from tonight, I'd appreciate that. Do we want to do I'll that? make that motion on the recommendation of uh, Council to amend the minutes. Second by Mr. Bean. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. I'm going to abstain. I abstain on those minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now um, we're going to move back to the selectman's goals. Um, Mr. Bridal. Selectman's goals. When I saw this, I, I looked at it and I, I think it's good that we have a set of goals. I also think it's good that we incorporate uh, input from our department heads so that we know where they're coming from. Uh, and I would propose that we do a workshop meeting, other than just a regular selectors meeting, to sit down and see what our goals are for this community are and get some input from our department heads, get some input from our, as, as I'll call our department heads, you know, the stakeholders and some of this stuff to, to find out what what their visions are and what they are, and I think we we need to do that. And I'd like to see that's what I'd like to see for before we come up with a specific set of civic lectman's goals. Talk to public works, talk to the fire department, talk to the police department, talk to the rec department, and we can go through the rest of the departments too if you if you if you'd like. But um, if you if dealing with the past six years, doing school boards uh, goals and objectives, um, that seemed to work out well so that we were all on board, and then, then once we come out with our selectmen's goals and objectives, then the department heads, as they're going forward and moving forward to their year, they are looking more to what we are looking for instead of each individual unit. And that's the way I'd like to see us do it. Um, other comments about uh, Rusty's suggestion? I think, it, I think it's a good suggestion. I think we should set one goal, that we have these goals done in a month. We get our workshops together. I think that's I think that's important. I think what Rusty said is very really good. Uh, I think we need some general goals of the selectmen, and then some goals you know that that reflect around uh, the department heads and stuff. You know, I, I just come up with a few. You know, I, I think I think that this year, you know, in, in prior years we've had default budgets and budgets that are lower. I think the selectmen have to come up. With a budget that reflects the will of the voters, mm -hmm. and that we, we can then learn that uh, that there's more cooperation be between boards, and I think that that's part of our responsibility, part of the responsibility of the boards. And I think Rusty's idea on having workshops with the other boards to come up with more of a cooperative, and what do you want, and what do we want, and how are we going to arrive at that? Because what we're all looking out for are the voters and the taxpayers in Hampton. So are we looking to discuss the goals this evening? Well, we don't know. I think Rusty's idea is a great idea, that we have workshops. But I, I think we should all be thinking about what we view as goals for the selectmen. And I think, you know, we should set a date, we should set a time limit so we can finish <coughs> this and not just something left out there. What if we did it um, two weeks from today, or not on 
not on Easter Monday, then the following week. Um, and maybe we could invite the department heads to come in and maybe start that meeting at 6 o'clock instead. I think that gives you a start. I mean, it's probably going to take up your whole meeting just discussing goals and objectives. I think that's that's why I suggested maybe not doing it on a regular selectman's meeting, but doing it on, a, on an alternative time so that like we can... Like, what are you suggesting? Whether we do a, a meeting on an off night or a Saturday or however we okay, decide I we want to do it. I think it needs to be at a, on an off night. I, mean, I think it takes up, it's going to take up too much time as your regular meeting. Okay, so really when do we have an off night? Let me, look at the, let me look at the schedule tomorrow, get back to all of you about uh, what available dates there are on the calendar for that are free of meetings here mm -hmm. so that you can come in and meet here. Okay, where we could have the meeting at 7 o'clock and it could be... Uh, we'll invite everybody. Recorded, I mean. And yeah, absolutely. We'll have input yeah. from the... And I, I think it's necessary that we give some direction to the people we're inviting to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they know what they're coming for and what we're going to be discussing and how we're going to be discussing it. Okay, so we'll do that at a 7 o'clock meeting at a date we determined by Mr. Welch. Is that satisfactory with everyone? Sounds good to me. Okay. And we'll get back to everybody the next day or two after we finalize all that. Okay. And um, any other new business? Yeah, can I can I grab a piece of this uh, selectman scrolls because everyone looks at things oh. a little bit differently. Yes. And uh, I'm loaded for there, and I've been here for years now, and uh, it's great um, not to be the chairman. Thanks for uh, serving us, mm -hmm. Mr. Griffin. Uh, Chapter 41, um, uh, New Hampshire RSA is the selectman shall manage the prudential affairs of the town of Hampton. And uh, I've got a list of what I think, uh, in my personal opinion, are prudential aff pr affairs. Uh, number one, and we talked about it tonight, the uh, uh, New Hampshire legislators are coming in to see us. And uh, um, Mr. Welch has spoken tonight about the uh, memoranda we received from New Hampshire Municipal Trust, number 11 call for a $50 million cut, give or take a couple of million, to local municipalities. Uh, that means that local taxpayers will be without that money. Uh, it goes from rooms and walls to high road, from A to Z, it's perilous. His most recent one, which I have not had the time to read yet, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes here because uh, these goals are important and they are prudential. Uh, this one is $100 million. And, uh, there's testimony uh, a couple of weeks ago up in Concord. In Hampton, uh, we're pushing $0.2 uh, billion, dollars, almost $200 million in revenue that the state secures from this town. Uh, we look at uh, um, a question by Mr. Sanborn from the Senate Ways and Means Committee uh, for what Hampton has contributed uh, for infrastructure. And for the last 15 years, it's been about $2 million a year. That's Hampton taxpayers to support the state. Uh, we talked tonight about parking down at the main beach. Um, it's uh, not run very well, and it's certainly not run very well in the winter time. Uh, if you look at our uh, audited financial reports for year end of 2013, there's a line there called shared revenue uh, for years and years and years from the state of New Hampshire. Uh, besides the fact that we're up to about $200 million as a revenue camp uh, in Hampton, uh, that always reflects zero dollars. Uh, and as such, we provide services. Mr. Welch has a, a chart from a request from department heads to examine our, our services. Um, if you look elsewhere uh, in the audited financial reports, and you're under 2013, there's a couple of million bucks of uh, charged expenses. Uh, so uh, much to Mr. Waddell's comments tonight on, on land development, we charge some people for services, but we don't charge the state. Uh, we look at the default budget, uh, we're short on money, we have catastrophic weather conditions, but we provide services uh, to the state of New Hampshire, which is a $5 billion corporation, gratis. And uh, I think that uh, due to the exigencies presented by uh, uh, bulletin number 11 and now 12, it calls for $150 million in cuts, uh, that we need to re-examine that. So I would be very keenly interested in hearing from our legislators uh, what they're doing specifically for the town of Hampton, specifically for shared revenue, uh, 
particularly for them to bring in a, a coalition in Concord and uh, provide effective uh, legislation in a very <coughs> tough environment up there that doesn't have any money. Um, moving on, repeal of 7212 Alpha. Cordell Johnson <coughs> and Randy Cushing really went to the well on that. Uh, the local paper called it a uh, shameful uh, vote in favor of corporate welfare, crony capitalism. That, of course, cost the town $1.2 million. It took a significant amount of revenue off the platform for us to upload our town. The tax uh, assessor briefed the board on that. That affected uh, uh, new money to the town despite the development in the last several years. It, uh, it uh, has pernicious effects on our bottom line and our ability to conduct government operations. So again, uh, 7212 Alpha will explain other options with town council uh, to fight back. That agreement ends and I believe it's 2020. Uh, we don't know where that liability goes from there and it could become more steep. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Senator Stiles moving on to a, a third issue, SB 213, distribution of the meals and rooms tax uh, revenues. Again, Mr. Sanborn um, talked about disproportionality of a town receiving more money than a town uh, that uh, doesn't provide the services. And of course, when we provide all of our services and we provide $30 million of infrastructure and we get nothing back from the state, that is, in essence, a definition of disproportionality, and we suffer because of that. So the mm, Senator Stiles efforts, and she did not receive a lot of support up there. Um, from the other legislators. Um, uh, I went up. I, my, uh, my testimony is online with the Ways and Means Committee. I would ask that that be put on the town website, and I would assume that would be done so without objection. Uh, and it talks about the strengths of Hampton, and it's very collegial and it's very courteous. Uh, Mr. Sanborn talks about the disproportionality, and we suffer from that. So we need to support that effort to get effort again. We need to uh, um, work continuing on repealing 7212. Um, in terms of zoning at, at the beach, uh, I think the, uh, the board should uh, entertain notions, and there's some interest in, in the zoning of the west side of Ashworth Avenue from residential to uh, business seasonal, and that is on the southwest side of Ashworth Avenue. That will ma maximize property values for current use for current owners and add consistency and symmetry to the land use at the beach. Uh, additionally, uh, that Hampton Marina, uh, the town is becoming uh, um, exclusively confined to beach access. Our local denizens have a small park at, at North Beach at the Coast Guard Station. Oftentimes it's very difficult to get parking, and as we develop and as we uh, uh, build and we grant those approvals, there will be very uh, little opportunity for taxpayers and working class people in Hampton to enjoy the beach. I think the town, the Board of Selectmen should uh, entertain incipient discussions and look at something like a facility of the Hampton uh, Marina to secure and buy that purchase that, if possible, to secure waterfront access for Hampton denizens and taxpayers. It's consistent with about $30 million infrastructure that we have spent uh, in the last 15 years, police stations, fire stations. This would be something that would be absolutely to the benefit of Hampton taxpayers and Hampton residents. We've heard a lot about the Aquarian Water Company. It's a fire down company. Um, we don't know. Today it's Australian. We don't know if next year it will be owned by uh, Mr. Putin or the Chinese. We have no idea. Um, but it's our water. There are other municipalities. Mr. Welch is uh, ex particularly aware of the uh, process, the challenges of uh, purchasing a water company. I think the board ought to engage in the incipient discussions and concept of purchasing the Aquarian Water Company. It's consist consistent with other municipalities securing their own water future. It's, uh, again, uh, this water source that we talk about that, that is our water is a foreign owned asset. Uh, it's integral to Hampton. It's a, integral to our physical and economic development and our physical future. Uh, and this, is, of course, is an over the horizon uh, execution or a uh, research. Uh, the town of Hingham, Massachusetts, is currently in uh, uh, court, and they are at odds with Aquarian on the valuation. They are intent on purchasing. Aquarians assets for the town of Hingham, 
and uh, they're about $100 million away in valuation, but other municipalities are doing that, and I think it's inherent that we, uh, or important that we will pursue those. Um, Chapter 53, HB 16, moving on, an act relative to the Hampton Royal Estate Fund. Uh, we have $19 million in the fund. Uh, that sits there. It's grown uh, uh, prodigiously. It's been well managed by the trustees. Um, I think we ought to take a look at, at changing that. Town Council has uh, developed a, a loan article where we could borrow our own money and not level to ourselves 4 or 5%. If you look at our bond uh, payments, uh, some of our bond interest runs as high as 5%. We have dollar infrastructure needs. The market has been very, very good. The money's been well managed. Uh, it is at risk when it's at equities. It could disappear a substantial part of it tomorrow. We have substantial uh, infrastructure needs. We should pursue uh, freeing up that money and have use to that. Uh, per the town council's uh, warrant article that he's prepared, that would change uh, legislation that's specific to the town of the Hampton, does not need other legislators. This is an easy one for our legislators to do. And then we simply put that town wrong and make that happen. Finance, um, when we look at finance, uh, last year we talked about uh, Gatsby providing uh, depreciation. Mary Louise is big on the rolling stock, rightfully so. Uh, our motor vehicle assets and memorandum that just came out is $5 million a year. Again, this goes to our, our well, that's, that asset is at $5 million. And if that's appreciated into something as small as 10% a year, that's $50,000 a year just built into our vehicles. So I'd be interested in getting a, a good figure now that we're conforming with Gatsby when we do the our accounting to come up with these depreciation assets on our operational equipment and our plant equipment. We have uh, a figure of compensated absence. Absence is payable on our balance sheet. Uh, it is a liability. It is for our employees. We have no professional uh, accounting standard for setting aside that money. It is now over seven, seven figures. Uh, we, we just kind of thumbnail it, use some Kentucky vintage. We've talked about it before at this board, uh, and we need to address a, uh, a figure that's seven figures large in a more professional, uh, financial, uh, responsible way rather than um, Mr. Jones is retiring today, and suddenly we have to come up with money. Uh, we're, we're at Ether um, on our budget now, and I don't think that's a professional way. We talk about capital improvements. We need to set aside and forecast money for this. When it starts going over a million dollars and starts creeping towards 1.5 million, that's our responsibility. So uh, we would appreciate, or I would, those numbers from the finance. Uh, again, the uh, state, the charges for the state, there's a memorandum, and, and Mr. Welch and I have been talking, again, what we're looking at for, for state charges, um, we need to uh, examine that. In terms of operations, uh, I'm looking forward to a brief from the uh, fire chief on the fire inspector position. Uh, there's been discord on that. It's been three years now since I've been on this board, and uh, there, uh, there's been random discord. It's, uh, it's high on the radar. And uh, we need to have a brief uh, from the chief, and I'll be requesting that in a couple of weeks once we get settled in the new board. Uh, and it, I would like a, a dis detailed uh, brief of operations in the process um, so we can remedy the situation and uh, we won't have such regulatory torture. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, does anyone else want to uh, clarify uh, their goals? to be discussed or what you would like Mr. Walsh to. Do we want to have this um, meeting after we meet with the uh, state or do we want to have it before? It's up to you, certainly. Get the chairman. What do you suggest? Would you have most of your questions there? Um, it doesn't matter to me whether it's before or after, Mr. Chairman. Okay, then let's just find the time. Anyone yeah. else? We'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll find out what the best times are. Yeah. <coughs> and we'll discuss that next week. Um, going back to <coughs> other um, new business about the uh, people on the committees. Do you have a list of those, Mr. Welch? I do, Mr. Chairman. People on what committee? The... Um, the board usually appoints representatives to various boards, committees, and commissions as sort of a liaison 
between the Board of Selectmen and those committees. Uh, the ones that are out there right now are the <coughs> Recreation and Parks Committee. There's, uh, there's a, uh, a regular member and a maltnet. Uh, there's a representative to the CATV Committee. Uh, there is a representative to the uh, CIP Committee. There's a representative to the Records Committee. There is a representative to the Energy Committee. There is a representative um, to the Hampton Chamber of Commerce. That's it. Those are the ones that are currently filled. Okay, can I have that, please? Certainly. Okay, so um, now this last year, who was the representative to the Recreation and Parks? I was, and I'll still do it. So it moves. <laughs> okay, and who uh, will be the second? I'll do it. I mean, I don't mind. Do you want to certainly what's going there? Uh, they so currently both both hold those positions. Okay. So okay. <laughs> no change so there. The next one is the next one is a representative to the CATV. Again, I was. I will. Do you want to stick with that? Yeah, if people don't mind. Okay, that's fine. If, 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 and who would like to be the There's alternate? no alternate. Uh, no, there isn't. There no. doesn't need to be an alternate. Uh, the, other, the next one is a representative to the uh, CIP committee. Mary Louise was the, was the alternate, was the representative to the CIP committee last year. Okay. And, uh, Phil, you're going to be doing the budget committee, I understand? I understand. That's available. Yes, okay. sir. Can budget. you do the CIP also? Absolutely, sir. So, do we... And, I'll t be the second for that one, the alternate. Okay, for for if that's okay with which everyone. one? The CIP. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Next one is the Records Advisory Committee. Mr. Bean was the representative for that last year. I'll do that one. Okay. And the next one is the representative of the Energy Committee. Mr. Bean was also that last year. Okay, do we have a volunteer for that one? I'll just stay on it. If you want to no stay on it? Sure. Okay, Mr. Bean. And <coughs> one more. The representative to the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce, and that was Mr. Griffin last year. I'll do it if you want. It's fine by me. Yeah, Mr. Bridal, and I'll be the alternate. Okay. And that was it? That's it. That's it. And um, I just want to <coughs> just lay it out there that I also do the Hampton Area Commission. And number 10 is return to recessed public hearings of February 20th. Oh, old business. Oh, yeah, we did. Other old business, I'm sorry. Mr. Bridal? I'll set. This is Wolfley. Yes, I have several items under old business. First of all, uh, after what appeared to be a successful year for the board last year, uh, I was um, disappointed to see that Mr. Griffin was elected as the chair last week, not because of anything to do with Mr. Griffin, but I think that uh, I was not happy at being bypassed, this being the third year of my current term and by the tradition of the board, which apparently means nothing, uh, I had expected to serve and I am a little surprised at um, what appeared to be a uh, predetermination of the chair before we got here. In that context, I did attend the budget committee meeting as uh, your representative on Tuesday. They had questions, etc. I cleared some uh, things with Fred, and um, I responded to the questions by email to the chairman of the budget committee uh, on Wednesday. I also called Mr. Bridal on uh, Wednesday morning and advised him that I would be stepping away as the um, select man representative on the budget committee because I uh, no longer, frankly, uh, respect the actions of this board. Uh, I am uh, one-fifth of the board, and uh, I think that I was owed more respect than what I saw last week. Next item is the um, 
water company that Phil mentioned, I will never vote to ask the public to buy the water company. We have clean, safe water. I have friends in Exeter that won't drink their water. Enough said on that. Um, the, I've been discussing with the Conservation Com Commission the revetments, and um, they need to recommend to the Planning Board. I have also mentioned this to Jason Bashand. Uh, they, the planning board needs to get together with conservation and do some, uh, some consistent uh, planning uh, for the revetments that are going to be built. Uh, I think that in light of the committees which Fred has just mentioned, I've been made aware of the situation on the Energy <coughs> Committee, and I think some of these things slip through the cracks from time to time. Uh, I think we're not supervising the committees that we have as, as well as we should, perhaps. And I have just been made aware of a situation on the Energy Committee last year that troubles me. And I think we ought to take a look at how these committees are run instead of having them turn into little fiefdoms. The uh, point of order, Mr. Recreation. Chairman. I, I, I don't, I don't care if the uh, Adam Slickman would criticize. Well, I'm I'm point of order, I've got the floor, if I may. Um, it criticizes this board, but I, I, I don't want to ascribe to uh, calling other committee members little fiefdoms. Thank you, sir. I, I think that this board should have better control and oversight of the committees that operate for it. They shouldn't become little independent. Uh, entities. I think we should have just a, maybe an annual review. <coughs> we need to know when we are going to designate a date to meet, uh, to ask to meet uh, on reopening that joint operation plan. That's going to drag along forever unless we sit down and do something about it. And also, since it's almost the end of March, I think we need to set up a time before the season begins, <coughs> if it ever does, to meet with the neighborhoods including the neighborhoods in the precinct that are having significant traffic problems and enforcement problems. And I think we need to, to flag dates for those and get busy working on them. And one other item that I can think of at the moment that I want to bring up under that um, joint operation plan or separately with the DOT, the way stations. I was coming up from Seabrook a couple of days ago, and I noticed the sign that's been there since I've lived here that says that the way station is, is not operating in Hampton Falls. We have trucks coming up Route 1 every single day. And Fred mentioned detouring vehicles when we're doing the high street drainage project that's going to go across Route 1 and down behind the railroad tracks. And we have no idea what's in the trucks on Route 1. Nope. It's an exceptionally narrow road. We have no clue what's in those vehicles. And they're coming off I-95 through Exeter Road as well. And I think it's about time, if the state wants revenue, I know they don't want to pay people to man them in the way stations, but if the state wants some revenue and if we want some safety, I think it's about time to start putting pressure on the state to staff and get those away stations going so that we're not uh, at, at the terrible risk that we are at now. And I will apologize to the Budget Committee for not uh, joining them, by the way, because it has nothing to do, I do respect the Budget Committee, and it has nothing to do with them. Any um, other old comment people would like to? Well, one thing Mary Louise brought up was the, uh, the, the way station and the truck. Now that we have frost band hopefully coming or so on that our town streets, um, could we, we ask the, the uh, police department just to check on the number of trucks on, on Toll Farm Road and, and, and Drake Side Road? Do they have the no through traffic signs on them? They do. There shouldn't be any trucks on them unless right. they're making deliveries. Well, uh, you, you just might want to... Point well taken. Ha check. <coughs> mm -hmm. Again, I take it. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Uh, this I really want to hear on that joint operation plan this one is, conference yeah. before we get into summer. Um, any, any other old comment? I would just like to say, as far as the uh, chairman goes, what's happened all the other years I've been here is people before the. Uh, first Monday night after the election, people always discuss it one-on-one, -on -one, not as a group. And um, 
people discuss it the day of the election and whatever, and it's not unique. I was overlooked at one point. And you did take a look at yeah. No, I don't think it was that, Mrs. Walsh. It was the first, maybe, the first time you were elected. Yeah. yeah. And um, Dick Nichols was chairman either two or three years in a row. I remember that. Um, so I, I don't think there's any bra uh, breach of protocol. There is no protocol. There was a protocol, Mr. Dean, that we removed last year. Yeah. Do you have a motion for... I, I would make a motion to uh, adjourn to, at 2109. I'm going to a respond second. to that. Chain discussions of any such matter should not occur, just like chain uh, emails, et cetera. And I have discussed nothing ever with any of you related to that. Good for you, Mrs. Wilson. Yes, well. All in favor? Thank you.